Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name is Stuart, and it's back to Warhammer the Old World for another painting tutorial for a regular warrior from the game. And today it's the turn of Chaos Warriors. Now, this has given me an excuse to pick up one of the new Warhammer Age of Sigmar Slaves to Darkness Chaos Warriors, which are very much updated sculpts from the original Warhammer Fantasy Battle ones. They're maybe slightly larger, but they are awesome things. And I didn't buy a whole box. I don't need them. I'm not collecting the army, but I did pick up one new miniature on Sprue for use in this video. The plan is to paint one warrior to a decent tabletop standard and there will be a jump off point in the middle with a slightly more basic stage before we go on and do some extra highlights. Some of you I know just copy the odd technique here and there. Some of you like to follow all the way through and some of you like to sort of stop halfway and don't do the final highlights. So there's plenty in there for everyone. I'm going to be doing a black armor today so the sort of the standard you see for a lot of chaos warriors and because of that the usual zenithal prime needs to be modified slightly to work with this miniature so regular viewers will know that i like to paint with using a zenithal priming method which i then dry brush afterwards quite often to really pick out the details so i was a bit of a mix there between standard zenithal priming stroke underpainting and then the slap chop method added on top as well and the reason i do this because i like to base coat with citadel contrast or army painter speed paints Vallejo Express colours, those new formula paints that are designed for quick painting. Now, not a huge fan of them just on their own over a plain white prime, but when you already add an underpainted shadow or highlight or a mixture of the two, um, you get a really, really nice effect, which um, it saves you a bit of time later on when you're doing highlights and things. But I also find it much more pleasing to base coat with these paints. It's smoother, easier to do and more enjoyable than sort of standard base coating. Now, I will pop my usual link into Zenithal Priming. It's a very short video, but it will give you a bit of an idea of what I'm talking about if you happen to be new and, and new to that technique. And what you see is here I have a black prime miniature, of which I'm still doing a bit of airbrushing of white, but I'm trying to get to the areas that are just going to be fabric and not the black armour. Now, you may not want to try this unless you're experienced with the airbrush. So you could hand paint these in grey and then dry brush white white or just hand paint them in white afterwards. So here I am using a little model colour off-white just to go back in and pick out some of the details which is impossible to airbrush really without getting too much on the black areas. So just getting in there in those areas that are really close to the armour making them stand out a little bit and picking out the edges before I do that dry brushing stage that I mentioned earlier to really pick out those edges. Now I did a pretty good job of not getting the white where I didn't want it, but of course there will be a little bit of overspray on the on bark. So I'm just using a little bit of Game Air Black here just to go back in and touch up any of the black areas that I want to be black. As I said, this is going to be black armor, so I want to make sure it's a fairly clean base to work with. And there we have it, so semi-zenithal stroke slap chop, but also some clean black to work from for the armour. So the first colour I'm going to be using is Contrast of Blood Angels Red, and this will make a lovely base for the lower half of the cloak. Give it a nice rich even coat and you can already see the natural shadows and highlights that are formed from the priming method showing through rather than it just looking like a flat red colour. Now while that's drying, I've got some grey sear here and I'm just going in and painting a few little lines on the belt which I couldn't get in with an airbrush before and I just want to make sure that I've got something to paint a brown um, contrast colour over in a, a bit later when I'm doing the leather and I'm doing that now while that red coat is drying. And now on to that brown and it's Garagax Sewer, which is one of my favourite browns, which if you watch these videos a lot will have no doubt have seen in the videos before and heard me describing it as such before. But it's a nice 
versatile brown that works really well as fur or as leather. And I'm just painting it here over those marks that I put on where the belt is showing very, very slightly. I'll also use it on the gloves, of which really it's only the fingers and thumbs that are showing. And I marked it in the same way using the grey sear. I'll also I'm going to use it on the lower parts of the boots. So not the turnover parts, but on the, the bits that are touching the floor around the toes and the heel, etc. And you'll see again the way that the miniature is primed, so that sort of zenithal area down the bottom will naturally show some highlights through there already. And for the top half of the boot, it's Army Painter Speed Paint and it's hardened leather. Now this stuff is slightly more orange and slightly lighter. I like the idea that this is kind of the inner part of the boot that's been folded over. So maybe it's not quite as worn. Maybe it does, you know, not in the weather as much. Doesn't get wet as much. Um, so it's a slightly different shade. And if anything, it just breaks up the colour as well and gives a little bit more variety to a miniature, which you need when you're doing an armour that's this black, which is obviously fairly plain and dull. Next, we move over to Contrast Fire Slayer Flesh. Now, you say, where's the flesh on this? Well, this miniature has some very grim parts to it. So the sort of tabard part at the, at the front and the shoulders over the top of the cape are clearly patches of skin. There are also some on the shield, which we'll come to later. At the moment, the shield is left all black for some future um, parts we need to do with some silver. But I'm using Fire Slayer Flesh here on these skin areas. I will use a second skin colour in a moment to have some different patches. You might not be able to see it very clearly at the moment, but this, these skin areas are sewn together to make up this sort of patchwork of gruesomeness. Um, and I would like to change the tone slightly. There's a few ways we'll do that, but right now we're starting with this colour. So now on to Army Painter Crusader skin. It's subtly different colour, got a little bit more red in the mix. It's hard to see at this stage, but it does pool a little bit more in the recesses and runs off the surfaces. So the finish you get is, is quite different in the end. Um, I don't want it to be so different that it looks like a child's patchwork quilt. We hardly look like a child's patchwork quilt when it's made of skin, but you know what I'm getting at. But I wanted a slightly different tone to work from for when I highlight later on. Next up for the horns on the helmet, I'm using three colours at the same time. So we have snakebite leather, we have agarash dunes, and we have skeleton hoard. Now the idea is that I'll be applying them one after each other while they're still wet and, and blending them together just slightly. So I'll start with the darkest tone here at the bottom of the horn and then I will move on to the agarash dunes and then the skeleton hoard afterwards. They stay wet for, for long enough that you can easily wet blend between them and then you'll get that nice progression in a really, really super simple way. So next up I'm using some metals and this is black metal from scale 75. It's a lovely dull metal I'm going to be just using it to gently dry brush on the edges of the shield and some parts of the armour. Now this is just flat black. I've deliberately decided not to do any other highlighting on it. I was tempted to airbrush in some grey. Um, but because of the complex nature of all the different layers, I thought it would overcomplicate the paint job and I'm really trying to present something here is as a method that you can get a very nice looking miniature, but in a reasonable amount of time, especially if you have to paint 20, 25, 30 of these. And the dry brushing method here and the chipping we're going to do on the black afterwards gives it more than enough depth to look like a black armor. So next up we have Game Air Silver Vallejo colour. I'm just going to be using it on the edge of the sword here to really, really make that part brighter. But after that, using a much smaller brush, I'll be going around and working on the edges of the armour plates and also doing some sponge chipping as well. And this will give that black the depth that it needs. So now we have to return to those bits of skin on the shield and I'm going to base them first with grey sear. Obviously I couldn't do these earlier, it would be very very hard to 
paint them and not get silver on and do all the other things you needed to to make that black armor look right so they're quite subtle and hard to see but they're clearly skin from faces which is wonderfully gruesome so i'm just going in with the gray sear here not worrying if there's a little bit of black showing through almost over brushing there and then i'm going to use the same method on them afterwards as i did with the skin in other areas and whilst those are drying, I'm going to be using some Necro Gold also from Scale 75. There are a couple of areas of trim that require more than a little bit of, of, of silver. And this is a lovely desaturated deep gold, which is perfect for this and really works well with blacks and reds. So you've got your star at the bottom here, Chaos Star. And then on the chest, just below the helmet chin, there's another part of star there as well. I decided to go back and repaint a couple of other little details on the sword and the hilt and things in the same gold just to break up the, the black and, and silver and add a slightly, slightly warmer metal colour in there. So here I am adding those skin tones in to the faces on the shield using the same colours as before and the same method being fairly liberal with the amount of contrast paint I put on there. I wanted to pull a little bit rather than giving a really light glaze and it just dries in a quite a pleasing way. I'm going to come back and highlight those afterwards and it really pops them. Now using a little bit of model colour white grey I'm painting in all the areas of stitching. Now these are quite big stitches. You could paint them a number of ways. Maybe they'd be big metal staples. They would work. Um, and maybe they would be a, a darker thread. I'm going quite bright here purely so they stand out and pop. It's probably not the most realistic of colours that should be dulled down. But I did want some areas that would stand out a little bit. And once I've highlighted the skin, it doesn't look quite so stark. And here's the jump off point. So you could quite easily base this and have him ready for the tabletop another 20 friends or something or a unit of 30 and they look fantastic but as usual we're going to carry on and do some further highlights and the first of those is evil sun scarlet to start really making that cloak stand out even more so the red is mixed 50 50 with water and i'm just reinforcing the color here the top highlight that you get from the glaze over the zenithal is very very similar to the color of the red paint i'm using now so you're just kind of reinforcing it and tidying it up in areas where it's a little bit duller you can do a faint highlight or a faint line and again it just sort of gives you that edge highlight type of effect and you see that when i'm painting the edges of the cloak and another raised areas I find the trick is just to take your time really, adding layers as you go, building it up until you're happy and you feel like you've got a nice even transition from the lighter at the bottom colour and the darker at the top. Now for a further highlight I'm using a 50-50 mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Wild Rider Red. Again all the stages now are obviously optional so you may decide not to do this. I'm just going out and picking out more straight lines here so the actual visible highlight lines from before or the edges of the detail and it just makes it pop even more. For the boots I'm going to give them a quick highlight with flat earth model colour that's as far as they need they've already got a subtle highlight in there anyway and the way I base I'll be adding weathering powders which will end up all over the boots but I just wanted to brighten them up just slightly as it was now. For the top of the boot where the turn up is there I'm using model colour orange brown you'll already see there that it's lighter at the bottom which is good because you can't see it now because my fingers are in the way but I'm just reinforcing those colours as I did with the red, focusing on the a lighter area at the bottom and doing a faint top line around the top of the boot, more like an edge highlight. Now for the skin, I selected three colours from the Noctura range. We've got natural flesh, we have fairy flesh and we have white flesh. Now the plan is to use the darkest of the skin tones on the darker areas of the cloak, the mid-tone one on the lighter ones, and then when we get to the highlights, I'm using that top highlight on both 
Now, I found the trick here is to keep the paint fairly thin and don't try and completely paint over what you already have before. The, the joy of the contrast style paints as they've already given you that natural um, highlights. And, and I'm really just kind of picking out and trying to reinforce it there a little bit at a time and give it a bit of variation. And it starts to look a bit like skin. You're almost treating it the way you make highlight a face or something like that. So next up I've grabbed some model colour dark sand. I'm just going to give a very subtle highlight to the top layer of those horns. Then following up with some white grey just on the very tips. So returning to that gold just to give it a bit of a highlight and make it pop, I'm using scale colour elven gold. So it's from the same gold range that the necro gold is, just obviously a lighter tone. And just giving a subtle highlight, brightens it up a little bit and, and makes it shiny and pop. And then going back to the Game Air Silver from Vallejo, and I'm just picking out all the bits I've missed before. So there's little tacks or nails holding in the skin patches on the shield. So I wanted to grab those now and, and, and pick them out. I also added a few little scratches and extra highlights or extra rivets here and there. Just little things that look a bit dull and feel like they needed a bit of work. So here I'm opting for a ready mixed oil paint from Scale Color. This is grease. You could very, very easily use just some Agrax Earthshade or some Null Oil or something here. The reason I like oil washes is because they take a while to dry, which means you can play around with them afterwards and you don't get a mess with that pooling effect. So I'm just adding it a little bit to the blade here, making it a little bit more variation in the metal and making it a little bit more aged. And I do add a couple areas of this onto the gold as well just to dull it down and make it look a bit more worn and a couple of patches on the shield which is even though it's black when the oil paint dries it will leave a bit of a, a dirty residue there which looks quite cool. Now the joys of the oil paint is you can take it back off again and this is Artist White Spirit so I'm just using a little bit of clean stuff on my brush just to feather out Anywhere I felt looked a little bit too heavy, I do this on the shield as well. Now, I haven't treated with my miniature with any varnishes at this stage. You do have to be careful using white spirits. But if you're using artist stuff and you're using in small amounts, and you're not saturating the miniature, you can get away with it. If I was doing an all-over oil wash, I would have definitely sprayed the miniature in a, in a varnish first to protect it. But this is fine for this sort of limited use. So while all that's drying, I've started to apply the basing texture. This is just standard Vallejo Earth texture. It's like the Sterling Mud type stuff. If you're uh, from a GW background, it's just much, much better value. A big tub like this is around 12, 13 pounds um, rather than sort of five pounds for something, uh, you know, a tenth of the size. Now that'll take a little while to dry, so I've gone for some contrast plague bearer flesh here, and I'm going to thin this about five parts water to one part plague bearer flesh. And you can see here I'm just glazing onto those skin patches, giving more variation, making them look a little bit sickly. Um, who knows how fresh they are, but uh, just wanted to add a little bit of, of, of different variation to the tones. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time with blood. For the blood god, you have to thin this a lot as well. So this is easily five or six parts water to, 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 to the blood god itself. Um, and again, turn into a nice faint glaze. And uh, just adding it to areas where I haven't added the green. You'll see when I get around to the back and the shoulders and things, it just adds a little bit of color variation and depth. And because it's so thinned, when it dries, you can you can barely see it. It's just a subtle a subtle filter. So some standard Agrax Earth Shade over the textured base. And while that was drying, I'm using some dirty down rust here. Just a few little sort of subtle bits on the dinks on the sword and things. I don't want it to look like a really badly unkept weapon but maybe it's one that's been moist quite a lot and, and not always cleaned and looked after quickly directly after battle so some new fresh rust is just starting to 
form which would be easy to clean off and, and maybe he will after a, a few days worth of slaughtering and campaigning but it just also adds a little bit more colour and interest and it's super easy to do. Once the Agrax Earthshade was fully dry, I brushed on some Vallejo pigments, this is light sienna, and I'm just brushing it into the texture, this gives it a, a nice base to work from. Afterwards, added a few sickly looking tufts, and then applied some Vallejo thick mud, and this is an effect paint rather than a full basing texture and it gives just a really really nice effect getting some of it into the tufts and things as well as the earth has been churned up as the soldiers march through I'll also add some to the boots and around the back of the cape and then of course returning to some more blood for the blood god so a little area on the shield definitely the end of the sword and it's always nice to have a little splat down the bottom on the ground as well then, of course, ending with a nice black rim. And there we have it, one finished Chaos Warrior. Now, the armor is incredibly simple. I think that um, anyone can learn to achieve a black armor like that with, without using any edge highlighting. There's no using of grays or anything like that, just purely relying on the dry brushing the edges with with silvers and doing some sponge chipping and things and it gives a very very nice effect you'll also see that i spent a little bit more time making sure the cloak and especially the skin areas and things stood out as a bit of a contrast to the plain black armor but it all i think works together afterwards and I think it's a very repeatable, very, very simple scheme. Now, of course, it's scalable. If you don't feel comfortable doing all the highlights on the skin areas the way I did, you can very, very easily leave it just with the contrast paints. And you saw how that looks, still pretty good. And by the time you've added the basing and all these other little effects like the mud and things, you can get a really, really nice looking Chaos Warrior and Chaos Warrior Army without really using any high end or hard painting techniques. So those extra highlights I do past that sort of jumping off point as I describe it really really are optional depending on your, your painting level and of course if you're super super excellent painter and many many are far better than me um, you will do this in a completely different way and make a much better job of it but I like to think that this is somewhere in between sort of a very basic tabletop and moving up to a, a really nice looking arm if you had lots of them painted on the table but without really really stressing yourself with anything too hard if you are new to the channel and haven't come across it before, I've actually painted quite a few fantasy models now building up towards the release of the old world. I'm doing this little series and really, really enjoying doing it. So do check out the other videos based around the old world and the other painting tutorials that are there. And there are a few other old world themed videos as well that aren't all tutorials talking about building my own forces and my plans for the game and things like that as well. There's of course lots of other stuff on the channel, lots of other game systems covered, historical as well as fantasy and science fiction, so do check those out. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give us a like, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, Thank you very much for watching, take care and I'll catch you soon.